very deeply honored to be allowed. I cannot, I dare not say, chosen to introduce Dr. Gordon Prout, or Prout in English, <laughs> this evening. With the falling darkness of this Indian summer day, he is the light for us. Without him, we wouldn't have been here together in this capital of printing. Always a nice place for bookish people, isn't it? We wouldn't have had this opportunity to meet each other here and now, to enjoy each other, I hope so, and to learn from each other, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, and friends after lunch, let us give him a warm applause. The Jesuit scholar who studied hundreds of the company's school theatre programs, an achievement on sich. But it was then, under the Jesuit's mantle, that one of the characters of the theatre, Lady Typography, seduced him and they started a strong affair. The end of the affair is not in view yet, I hope so, and we all hope that it will stay for, for long. I only have to make some reservations about the uh, Romans. Who they over hell are? Does he mean the Huns? Or just the Romans are coming? Trying to find out with Dr. Google, a world opened it itself. Google, the Romans are coming. And wanting to make a print to learn a bit more, this rabbit came out of it, <laughs> drinking a lot of ink. <laughs> I'm sure Dr. Prout <laughs> will conjure another rabbit out of his head. <laughs> and to introduce us into the magic world of how, of how Roman type entered the paratext of actual editions. Dr. Roman Claude. <laughs> <laughs> Much 
like the formation of a Belgian government and lasted about 120 years. As far as we know now, the earliest Roman infiltrations date back to the 1550s, but it would take another 60 years before the Romans scored their first victories. And one would have to wait another 60 years until the 1670s before the decisive battle between Romans and Goths took place. At the end of the 17th century, most Goths were dislodged from their fortifications. But, as Stephen van Impen, uh, present today, and Jan Bos demonstrated five years ago, not every bulwark surrendered at the same time. They showed for the Northern Netherlands, for instance, that troops of historians were not amongst the first to embrace the new style and assimilated the Roman culture as late as the 1670s. Perhaps historians are too busy looking at the rearguard. In contrast, religious troops, obviously strengthened by faith, capitulated only in the 1680s, so on average 10 years, 10 years later than other legions. Some elite Goth troops would maintain their positions for many decades, even when they had already become something of a curiosity. In the next section I will discuss the conquest of the Goths by the Romans in the southern Low countries, which for the sake of brevity and um, I will also refer to simply as Flanders during the early modern period. Firstly, I will return to the survey by Van Impe and Bos and deal with Black Letter and Roman from a macro structural point of view by means of the typographical descriptors in the short title catalogue Flanders. Since they did their, their survey, um, the STCV includes today some 50% extra editions for this category of books which made it possible to extend their research for the South. Secondly, I will demonstrate how Roman type and related type families entered the title page. And thirdly, I will show on a microstructural level how Roman type entered the paratext of actual editions. As some of you may know, Details of the main text family or families used for each book are systematically noted in the short title catalogue Flanders. Um, it is... Where is the cursor? My fingers are too wet um, because I'm too nervous. Uh, so I can't get the cursor out. Um, for the purpose of this paper, I, se I have selected monolingual Dutch language editions only, with just one imprint, indicating, indicating a certain date and place of publication. So, uh, just to give an idea, that's about 4,400 editions. The first graph, and I will show uh, a lot of graphs now, um, indicates how the proportion uh, of books with text letter in black, uh, with text in black letter, continuously diminishes in favor of books with text letter in Roman. So you see the line of black letter going down slightly, continuously, and the line of Roman type for the the the, the main text in books uh, slowly going up. The next charts will all show only the 17th century because before nothing is going on. Um, in the period 1671-1680, the majority of Dutch language books was rendered in Roman type. And at the end of the century, printers used black letter in only a fifth of their production. And in, in the 18th century, this number was still shrinking. So, nothing new until now. If we now keep <coughs> the same selection criteria and combine them with extra features, in order to single out text genres, it becomes obvious that the Roman found was adopted for some, of, for some of them earlier than for others. In theory <coughs> case, 
For instance, the switch from black letter to Roman occurs very early in the 17th century. And this evolution seems to be germane to language and lit literature books in general. And it may be observed in poetry as well. So you see uh, here that poetry switches from black letter to Roman around the 1630s, 40s. So 30 years earlier than on average, in average books. Um, yeah, um, surprisingly, governmental publications are also ahead of the average books. As Stephen van Impe and Jan Bos already demonstrated for the North, history books produced in Flanders are very much in line with the general trend as well. And as the following graph indicates, devotional publications dealing with Christian doctrine are somewhat slower to, dra to drop black letter in favor of Roman, uh, in favor of Roman time. And the same can be said of other religious cate ca categories, such as Christian practice, prayer books, and catechisms. Topical publications relating to current events can also be considered as conservative text genres, where it concerns typography. I mentioned earlier that there was already in the 1550s some use of Roman type in Dutch language books, albeit rather restricted. That is some 60 years before Roman type was used to typeset the main text of Flemish books. This becomes clear when we look at the different type families on title pages. But just two remarks before we go on. The following graphs that will um, be from all be from 1514 until 1700, so uh, more than one and a half century. The following graphs will give information only about type families on the typographical title page, but exclusive of imprints. The information derived from printers' addresses has been e excluded um, because I um, think that um, the evolutions in imprints is uh, different from the evolution on the rest of the title page. But I did not get the, uh, the chance to gather the data yet. Second, the data I will present has been collected by means of two databases. For the 16th century books, Torat was used, the database Christoph Selslag will introduce to you tomorrow morning, and for the 17th century, the online bibliography, which will um, also be presented tomorrow morning by Diedrich Lannoye, um, was used. And I would like to thank both uh, colleagues for the provision of these tools. And these data, derived from these uh, sources, has been crunched in my own database uh, called Typographics, about which I have already spoken on other occasions. From the 1540s onwards, little by little, more and more type families are introduced on the title page. You see the evolution here from one uh, uh, type family on average um, uh, in uh, uh, 1541. Um, and for a whole uh, century, uh, where are I? Um, for a whole century, from about uh, 1540 until 1640, the number of type families more or less uh, increases continuously, and then stabilizes for at least six decades. From the beginning, black letter is to be found on almost every title page, and until the 1620s. 8 out of 10 title pages have one or more words typeset in this font. But from the 1630s um, onwards, it gradually disappears. In contrast, Roman type swiftly overruns the title page between 1541 and 1570, and by 1630 it is used on almost every title page. Remember? 
that Roman was used as text type for the main book only much later, on average in the 1670s. In its wake, and with a delay of about 10 years, words entirely composed of Roman capitals made their entry on title pages too. And eventually, the use of complete words in Roman uppercase will even exceed that uh, of those in Roman lowercase, featuring on all title pages from the 1680s onwards. In the 1550s, italics enter the title page as well and become part of general use in the 1680s. This, in contrast to the use of small capitals, italic capitals and civilité, which will appear only on a minority of the title pages. Whereas the previous paragraphs recorded the mere appearance of type founts on title pages, the following graphs will show which of them are dominant. Dominance is defined here in a quantitative sense and indicates the type found that is used in the largest number of words on the title page. The curve described by black letter on this graph clearly demonstrates how this type family gradually falls into disuse as a dominant type found. Where it was the main type found until the 1550s, it has completely disappeared by the end of the 17th century as the dominant typeface on title pages. And by the 1560s, Roman has become the dominant type family in about 20% of title pages, and 90 years later, it outstripped black letter. From the 1630s onwards, Roman capitals become more and more important as well, and as a dominant type, they almost reach the position of lowercase Romans at the end of the 17th century. The sudden rise of italics in the 1690s is also remarkable, a phenomenon that may explain the regression of Roman lowercase in this last decade of the 17th century. As we see from the graphs already, as we can see from the graphs already studied, the shift from black letter to Roman type as text letter is heralded by, the fair, by a fairly long series of evolving processes on the title page. But let us now have a closer look at these type families in the paratext of three examples. Since the 15th century, the Dutch language edition of the Imitatione Christi has been reissued over and over again and is therefore a good example of a devotional publication. There are more editions that I indicate here, but these are the ones I looked at specifically. As is typical of others, uh, others in this text genre, the text type swaps swaps black letter for Roman in the 1670s, so nothing extraordinary here. Almost a century before this, italics had been added to the title page and this was seen soon followed by the introduction of other text forms such as lower Roman case, um, Roman lowercase, uppercase and small capitals in 1591. At the same time, Italics and Romans were used to type typeset, running heads, book and chapter titles, and marginalia. In the book titles, black letter and Roman type coexisted for about 80 years, but at the moment the text letter changed to Roman, black letter disappeared from this disposition as well. The habit of typesetting the type table of contents in black letter continues until 1601 and then changes to Roman a year later, an option maintained by all uh, later printers. The same situation can be observed in, for example, the Mechelen Ordinance collections, which were reissued between 1535 and 1735. Roman type was used for the first time in the 1613 edition, not only on the title page, but also in the imprint, the dedication, the running heads and chapter titles. 
The text letter would change to Rome only after 1649. Third example. This sacred songbook by Niklas Janssen adheres to black letter for text in all editions, from 1605 until 1767. So that's one of these legions hiding in the woods that could not be found by the Romans. <laughs> A fact that, in the light of what has been said before, is not altogether without meaning. As a rule, literary, literary text genres should be expected to be ahead in the process of romanization, changing text type to Roman before the 1670s. The typography of this book deliberately goes against the grain as it sticks to black letter until the late 18th century. On the other hand, the subsequent editions are not completely immune to microstructural changes, especially in the paratext. For instance, from 1637 onwards, Roman type ousts black letter in the song titles, in the tables of contents and in the approbation. Also later than in previous examples, but still. I come to some uh, concluding remarks. On the level of text letter, there are no sudden turns, rather gradual evolutions that once they begin, they cannot be stopped. Although it sometimes takes about a century to change from black letter to Roman type. And we surmise that these processes must be understood as uh, broadly based cultural changes carried out by printers and obviously generally accepted by the public. It's obvious that the switch is first made in language and literature publications and by governmental publications, but on the level of individual editions there may be exceptions and then it's interesting to figure out why um, these books are uh, exceptional. Um, so you get a framework. The introduction of Roman type as text type in Dutch language books is heralded by the appearance of this type on title pages, but also by other, less visible, paratextual elements in books. Once the humanist type, um, once the humanist type founts have been introduced on the title page, they start to make their way throughout the layout of the entire book. And finally, this overview um, gives us a deeper understanding of the ways in which type families are used in the layout of books, and it also provides us with a tool that enables us to objectively and more exactly to determine how a given edition does not comply with the prevailing layout customs leaving us with the task of finding out why.